Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equilinox. In the last episode, we evolved our chickens into this adorable little duck, but as you can see, they're not exactly doing so well. So in this episode, I'm hoping we can figure out how to make this environment better for them, because it seems like they don't have the food that they need. This guy is super, super hungry. I thought it said that they would go into the water and eat the plants down here, but he's way too far away for that. Let's see what it says inside his menu again. Maybe there's something that we missed. So for food, it eats honey and water plants. Yeah, so you just need to go down to the water, little guy. It looks like he's waddling down there now, just pushing his way past all these chickens. Unfortunately, this isn't the duck that we had in the previous episode. This is Bo, so it's a descendant from our original. But I think he's gonna go eat. Yes, excellent. Oh, thank goodness. And he's doing so much better now, too. That's probably because it finally recognized one of these things as its favorite species. I'm not sure if that's actually one of the plants in the water, or if maybe it's looking at the wobbly tree that I placed over here instead. I figured we better start setting up our trees now. We're probably going to have to move our chickens away anyways. Though to be honest, they're not exactly too upset about this tree being here. It says they have zero of their disliked species, even though the tree is right next to them. So I don't know, maybe these chickens are different. Maybe they're fine with big wobbly trees. Why don't we go ahead and maybe spread some more? Or should we just wait for this one to spread itself? It is very, very young, so it's not ready yet. Oh my goodness, but look what it can evolve into. Oh, that is gorgeous. That would be perfect for all the trees we have up here as well. Maybe our little fall forest could blend into the hills, so we could start down here and set the grasslands. Ooh, I can't wait until we unlock that. We'll have to see what sort of special requirements it has, though. So today, we're going to take a look back at the magic forest, too. Now that our duck seems relatively happy, we could probably leave him to waddle around for a little bit while we try to restore the forest. Poor, poor Griffin's family. They've been guarding this place to the best of their ability, but it's just slowly withering into nothing. I know for sure that the birch trees prefer the grasslands, so I guess we're going to have to make sure that we only spread things that give us grasslands points. I think that means the daisies, which we do actually still have a couple of lingering down here. The yellow daisies like the fireflies of the forest. I remember that's why we placed them over here. I wonder if part of the problem was actually that different colored grass. If you guys remember, it said that it was a little bit more edible than our normal grass, so I wonder if the sheep were actually eating it too fast. Well, the edibility on this is pretty high too, so maybe that's not the case. I don't know, it seems like these dark patches are popping up with a bit more frequency, so I wonder if maybe these sheep are getting a little bit too greedy. That's why I'm wondering if we should introduce one of the apple trees. Would they be okay to grow over here? It's not going to be a forest, but would they survive? No, they don't like the grasslands biomes. So it looks like you guys are going to have to just survive on the grass tufts after all, so we better go ahead and add a couple more in here. It looks like this area is completely bare, and I'm sure that our birch trees are not too happy about that. It might be a good idea for us to stretch the grass all the way down here too, just so there is a bit more space to work with around our trees. As it is right now, they have to kind of cluster together like this, and that's probably only going to affect the population density. So what else can we spread around here for the grasslands biomes? If we select the spreads the biome of the grasslands, that should give us the rest of our options. We could evolve some wild mint. I think that was actually one of our tasks. Yeah, but it looks like we need some wild mint as well as a couple more wobbly trees to complete this task. So I think that's going to be on the list today. Our red maple trees, which we made many episodes back, were for this task too. And they're still thriving. So what does it take for us to evolve the wild mint? Did that have something to do with the edibility too? Let's see. We need a large size trait. That was the problem. So maybe if we go into the selective breeding of one of the very young grass tufts, this one right here should do. 
We'll be able to turn on the size of our grass to see which one is the largest right now. And I think we may have actually hit the largest one. Ooh, actually, this one is pretty big. This one might be big enough. Oh, but the grassland level is already too low. Well, that is what we're focusing on today. So let's make sure that we turn on the selective breeding of our largest grass tufts. That'll check one thing off of our list. Maybe all we need to do is spread some more of the flowers over on this side as well. In fact, we could probably just pluck one of these flowers from the ground and transplant it to the other side of the forest. That way we'll still have that bright yellow color. Otherwise, I'm sure that the daisies are just going to be white, though I suppose we could always play around with some more colors for them too. So let's place a couple more all around the place, and hopefully this will help make this area much healthier. What other colors can we play with for these little daisies? Maybe it would help if we go ahead and turn off this for now, that way there aren't quite so many numbers on the screen. We know that we can make them yellow. Ooh, and I wonder what color we have to turn them to make them tulips, the light blue color. So let's go ahead and work on that next. So we'll have light blue daisies and we'll have yellow daisies too. And I think that might call for us to focus on our sheep next. They're still the same dark gray color that Griffin was, but they've always wanted to paint themselves like the leaves on the trees. So a lot of you wanted to see either gold or cyan, and I think both of those colors would look really nice. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough points just yet for either one, but I wonder if maybe we could just slowly start mixing the color in. Cyan is a bit more expensive than gold, so let's start with this, and we'll see how much of that color we can get with our current points. Okay, it's not very much, but at least it's something, I guess. It's like a very, very light hint of gold, like our sheep are slowly evolving as time goes on. So someday our sheep are going to have the shiniest wool in all the land. But for now, I guess it's more like a pale bronze. At least they're trying, though. Our little sheep will get there before long. And it looks like we have our very first light blue daisy. So let's go ahead and start evolving the tulip next. Pansies are the only other flowers that we can evolve from this. But I don't think they were on the list, were they? Only the wild mint and the tulip for the grasslands, so the pansies must spread some other type of biome. Oh no, it looks like somebody's getting hungry again. Is that our duck? Oh, the poor thing. I wonder if this is another generation of ducks? Oh, it's a Nemo! The third generation of ducks. It looks like all of our trees are starting to spread too, so that's a good sign. And how our chickens feeling about that. Still perfectly fine with the presence of the wobbly trees. Well, I'm gonna take that as a good sign. But poor Nemo, he is starving. He just can't find any food. What are we going to do for this poor little thing? But we can at least place a little bit more seaweed right at the edge of the water here. Oh no, did our duck just die off? Oh, he was right there and now he's gone. Oh my gosh, that is so sad. We'll have to add some more ducks to the world as soon as we have the honey. But this little fish seems to have a different mutation. Is that a different kind of color? Not so much a redfish anymore. Ooh, that is a gorgeous color, actually. It's kind of like a purple. Yeah, and that's nothing that we can get on these fish. We're definitely going to keep selective breeding on that one. And with how quickly those fish reproduce, that is going to be everywhere inside this lake soon. So it looks like our tulips are ready now. Our tiny little tulips. So not only is this going to be a magic purple forest, but it seems like you're going to have quite a bit of flowers here too. We didn't read about this one yet, but I think I have to place it down somewhere. So we'll just go ahead and plop the tulip right here. And then let's make sure this is a suitable biome for it. A small patch of brightly colored flowers able to brighten up any dull area in the world. These tulips can live in almost any area as long as the terrain is fertile and green, enjoyed by insects and various small animals. Oh, I wonder if there's any other type of animal we could bring here? Some other type of animal aside from the sheep, of course. Somebody who would coexist with the sheep just fine. Tulips are actually some of my favorite flowers. I think my favorite type of flower would have to be the pansy, but tulips are also very, very pretty. 
so they can live in grasslands, forests, jungles, woodlands, and snow biomes too. But since we know they spread the grasslands, we probably don't want to go too crazy. And you know, that little menu said that the tulip's color is meant to be either blue or yellow, right? Those are its natural colors. But doesn't this look white to you? Do we have some sort of special color of tulip? Actually, that almost looks green. Okay. Well, I'm liking it. I can definitely live with that. It fits the theme of our magic forest to a T. Now, I do see that we have brand new little baby sheep popping up, but it is very, very hard to gauge the color of their wool right now. So we'll wait until the sun rises, and then we'll see if maybe Curly. Oh, the reincarnation of Curly has some special golden wool. We should probably do a quick sweep over the rest of the world anyways, just to make sure everything is going as planned. We still have our beautiful apple trees back here, and since this is the only place where they can truly thrive, why don't we make sure that we selective breed this so we won't be losing the special color anytime soon. Our sheep are still getting along nicely. It looks like everyone's doing fine here. Jack the sheep is taking a snooze under the sycamore tree. And do we have enough boar to complete our task yet? Not quite, and the environment isn't good enough either. So what I was thinking about doing is grabbing one of the boar and placing them down here in the valley, because this is where they can find all of their cedar trees. This one right here, these are the cedar trees. And we'll have to place a couple of stones around here too. It looks like these are just about to pass away, but we do have some younger cedar trees in the distance. So why don't we go ahead and make sure that we selective breed this too. And look at this tree! Oh my gosh, there are so many gorgeous trees that we can change all of these into. The juniper tree is next on the tall tree. Well, one step at a time. Let's go ahead and place some stones around here, because of course our boars insist. And then we just need to select one lucky boar to come on down here and start a family of their own. Maybe we'll choose the youngest boar? It looks like this bouncy little one is the smallest. Lizzie the wild boar. Off to find some apples. And we still do have plenty of apples down here for you to munch on, so I think you're going to enjoy this place quite a bit. It does cost a pretty penny to transplant them, but it's all for the greater good. So let's plop you down right here next to the apple trees. Oh, and she loves this place so much more. It only says that there's one like species though. Is she going straight back to her family? She's like, nah, I don't want to live down there. I'd rather stay up here with mom and dad. No, it looks like she's going off on her own again. Okay, Lizzie, I see how it is. Just testing out the limits of your new home, I guess. Patrolling the borders. Yeah, it says that they like cedar trees and stones, so I'm not quite sure why she doesn't accept that other item. I mean, we have the cedar trees right here. Maybe the stones just aren't close enough? Let's place a couple next to the trees, I guess. Will that do, Lizzie? Our picky little wild boar? Yeah, but now she's satisfied. So her environment is up to 100%. And that means all of her babies should be super happy too. This place is definitely more suited to the wild boars. So I don't know if we're going to continue breeding our wild boars up here. It would probably be more beneficial to just let them wither away, let the sheep take over, and continue to guard the apple trees. But I suppose if they hang on, then we'll just let them do their own thing. Kind of like the chickens too, I suppose. I wasn't expecting them to be so happy here. And now it seems like the trees are finally taking effect. Yep, they are not too pleased now that they see all of these trees in the distance. One or two is okay, but this many wobbly trees is a problem. Well, they can always go back to the chicken army if they need to. Now I think I do see two little sheep with some lighter wool on them. This one right here must be Curly, the one that we saw the night before. So I guess he did inherit that slightly golden coat. And then there's a little baby over here as well. Tripod. Oh, tripod the sheep again of all the sheep. Well, I guess you're the one who we're going to want to selective breed next, just so we can keep that color strong in their line. 
and every time we get some extra points to spare, we'll try to nudge that color up to the top a bit more, and eventually all of these sheep are going to be as golden as the buttercups on the ground. Ooh, do you think we should change Admiral's family over to Cyan? I mean, since we do have a little group of sheep frolicking around here anyways, they might be a good one for us to choose too. So who do we have right here? Barley? He's getting a little bit old. Do we have a younger sheep that we could work with? Oh, actually, all of them are very, very old. I guess Shiner would be the best choice. He has a bit more life left on him, so let's use him to start breeding Cyan. Did the colors change? Look at this, it costs a 1 million points for gold now? That was cheaper than Cyan before. Does it depend which group of sheep you're working with? And like what's around them maybe? Or what sort of color they start with? That is an interesting mystery. But I guess it's a good thing that the Cyan seems to be a little bit cheaper. Because maybe we can start breeding it in earlier than we thought. So our tulips have taken root. It looks like they're spreading all around this place now. We have plenty of little blue daisies, and I'm sure that our yellow daisies are still around here somewhere. Even the little white button mushrooms seem to be doing well too, so I think this grassland is thriving once more. In fact, it looks like this area right here, with the greenest ground of all, should be a good place for us to start breeding our mint. So let's go ahead and turn on the magnifying glass again, and see if we can find the right grass tuft to use. Aha, there we go. Here's one that we can use. So let's go ahead and start breeding it straight from here. Ooh, it's kind of going back and forth. It must be because of the quality of the grasslands is changing. Yeah, I think it may have paused again. So something is still not quite right. Ooh, and a strange kelp mutation has been born. Well, wait just a second, we've got to see what strange kelp color we have over here. Spreading on the very fringe of our ecosystem as well. So maybe this will lead into a brand new area for our fish. Oh, this is grass? Okay, it is literally showing us the size of every tiny little grass tuff in the entire world. Not just over in our magic forest. Ooh, this is going to be a blue kelp. Almost like a midnight blue color. It's not going to be easy for us to see right now, but that is going to be gorgeous. Yeah, we'll have to see if we can set up a special little ecosystem just for that plant. That might be a good way for us to start evolving more of the fish species too. I know we have a couple of tasks for that. Okay, this is really a lot trickier than I thought it was going to be. Basically, like every single time one of these grass tufts dies off, one of the flowers or something, it just dips a little bit too low for us to actually evolve our plants. Oh no! Oh, it died before I could finish. It was doing so well too. Maybe this one can take its place? If we just wait for a moment, it might pop up. We are so close, it is right on the fringe. I mean, maybe if we just go ahead and place one more grass tuft right next to it, maybe that'll do the trick. Is it enough now? Not quite. There has to be an easier way to do this, though. I don't know, maybe we should try the wheat? It's just, they prefer to be in an area with the rocks, so we'd have to place those down, too. I don't think the birch trees were the ones that didn't like rocks. Let's just double check to make sure, because I don't want all of these withering away in the process. It doesn't look like they have any dislike species, so I guess that's going to be okay. We'll go ahead and plop a couple of these stones right around the place where we planted our wheat, and maybe that'll finally be enough to push this over the edge. What does it say now? About 80%? Okay, I'm starting to think it's seriously because our sheep are just eating a hole in the ground. We definitely had more grass over here than this. So as they start getting closer to our evolution area, that's why the environment keeps jumping up and down. Okay, I think I may have done it. This place might be far enough away from all of our sheep that it's not going to be affected, and we are so, so close to finishing the evolution. We're over 50% now, so we just have to wait. You guys stay to your side of the grasslands, okay? Play around with Admiral's family, maybe. Did the little babies inherit any of the color? It is so hard to see, but I think they do have a slightly bluish hue. 
Yes! Oh, finally we did it! We evolved the Wild Mint. Alright, so let's read about this thing. This should be our last grassland spreading plant, I guess. So what does the Wild Mint take? Why on earth was it so hard for us to evolve? A small leafy herb with a very minty fragrance. A good plant for spreading the grasslands biome, and it also packs quite a bit of nutrition. Ah, so the sheep are going to enjoy munching on it? Or if not the sheep, then maybe some other type of animal? No wonder it was so tricky to keep them from eating our grasslands before this thing could evolve. It actually likes stones and flowers too, so this is the perfect place for you. As long as you enjoy the higher altitudes, you're going to have no problem living here. In fact, let's go over this way. We'll place it right next to all the stones that we placed down. Ooh, it's growing nice and quick too. All we have to do is plop down another daisy or so, and then it should be happy as can be. So we needed a couple of these wild mints to complete the task, and that might actually be the last thing that we need to. We have our wobbly trees, we have our red maples. We just need three more, two more wild mints in the world. Yeah, we might as well just wait for the task to complete itself. No use spending our extra discovery points on this. We'll let Mother Nature take care of the rest. And there we go, the grassy plains is complete. So what are we going to gain from completing this task? The tomato plant and the merry berry task? And a whole bunch of discovery points too. It was pretty tricky to take care of, so I'm glad it was a good reward. So I wonder where we can place the tomato plant. Let's see if we can find that first, just to read about it. It might be some good food for some of our animals. This plant grows relatively quickly and produces juicy tomatoes which animals can eat. It is, however, rather tricky to grow and can only survive at very low altitudes in very fertile grasslands or woodland areas. So I suppose this might be a good thing for us to plant way down here? Maybe right next to all of our original sheep? We can see if they would enjoy munching on some tomatoes, I guess, though I'd imagine that some other animals might like them more. I wonder if that evolves into anything special, too. We can make the berry bush from this. Oh, I wonder if that's what the task is going to be. And I think we actually needed the berry bushes to unlock the deer. Oh, is that going to be next on our list? Unlock the berry bush and create a suitable area for it to grow in. Place some sheep in the area to make sure that they eat their fill of berries. Yes, so we need to have some sheep eat from the berry bushes. And then I'm almost positive that that would allow us to start evolving deer from them too. Yes, they can only eat from the fruit bushes to become deer. I feel like we would need to set up like a special place just for the deer too. Kind of like we've done for our boar back here. Oh, look how happy they are. A giant family of wild boar. I think we only need six to complete the task. So maybe the reason why we haven't unlocked it is because all of our other boar are up here. And they're not quite as happy. Maybe we should just scoot them on down to the valley, too? I mean, they're obviously having the time of their lives down here. Yeah, just one more boar couldn't hurt. We'll go ahead and drop you down next to all of your cousins. And there we go, there's another task complete. So let's go ahead and accept that, too, before we end up this episode. We even have two more tasks added to our list. A bird in the hand and forest flora and fauna. Use the chicken to breed the sparrow species. Once you've got some sparrows, make sure they're living near some suitable trees for nest building. Trees with a long life length and plenty of branches work best. After a while, the birds will start to build a nest. Maybe it's a good thing that we didn't focus on the sparrows first then. It sounds like that's going to be our next task. And since we do have some beautiful wobbly trees over here in our grasslands, I think this would be a pretty good spot for us to set up our sparrows. And as for forest flora and fauna, unlock all of the tier 2 forest plants and trees. There are three trees to unlock and three plants to unlock. If you breed all of them, you'll unlock a new species for the snow biome. Ooh, so we're going to start looking toward the mountains next too. That's probably a little bit further in the future, but I'm very, very happy with our tiny world right now. I think it's coming along quite nicely. Our sheep are already getting that golden sheen to their wool, and the forest is back to its old self. So maybe in the next episode, we'll focus once more on all of our feathered friends. 
But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys! Oh my gosh, wait a second, look what I just found! We have blue chickens! The blue chicken army is rising! Yep, I think the next episode is gonna be all about the birds. So let me know what you guys want to see in their new habitat.